Good evening. I'm Greg Sharp. Here is tonight's sports ticker. Husker head football coach Scott Frost held his weekly media conference today, and he talked about how excited he is for Saturday's home opener against Fordham and to have some fans back in the stands. And there's a different feeling for me. Um, we missed the fans so bad. It, being in Memorial Stadium last year with an empty house, um, it was it was almost depressing. And um, there's so much passion here, so many good fans. Uh, we can't wait to see them on Saturday. It's coming up later in the hour. Kickoff Saturday set for 11. Our pregame coverage begins at 7 a.m. Nebraska volleyball moved up a spot in the weekly ABCA top 25. The Huskers are now number four after their two wins over the weekend. Meanwhile, Husker volleyball freshman libero Lexi Rodriguez was named today as the Big Ten's co-freshman of the week. Rodriguez paced the Huskers with 5.1 digs per set in a pair of wins over Colgate and Kansas State. The Huskers are back in action Friday at 11 a.m. in the Devaney Center against UNO. Round Major League Baseball, one afternoon final. The Twins beat the Tigers 3-2. They're underway in Cincinnati. The Cardinals lead the Reds 2-0 in the top of the second. About to start in D.C. with the Phillies and Nationals getting ready to play. The Orioles and Blue Jays up in Toronto. Red Sox and Rays in Tampa. Later tonight, the Rockies at the Rangers. New York, the Yankees, that is, taking on the Angels. The Padres and Diamondbacks getting together in Arizona. And battle of first place teams, the Brewers and Giants in San Francisco. Astros and Mariners in Seattle. Braves and Dodgers. That'll be a good series out in Los Angeles. Those are today's headlines. I'm Greg Sharp. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Steps up in the pocket, eludes a man to the 10, to the 5, to the 1, dives, he is in! Touchdown, Nebraska! What an individual effort by Adrian Martinez, scrambling through bodies, arms, diving for the end zone, and the Huskers now lead it 13-0. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are, another week of Sports Nightly. Hope you had a good weekend. We got a busy show coming your way here tonight. The head football coach did have a press conference earlier today to recap the Illinois game and get ready for the Fordham contest, a home opener for the Big Red coming up on Saturday, 11 a.m. at Memorial Stadium. We'll hear some clips from the coach coming up later this hour. It's Monday, so Monday's with Matt coming your way in hour number two, and we'll sit down with defensive lineman Ty Robinson and get his take on the opener and how excited he is to play back in front of you folks at Memorial Stadium over the weekend. And as always, phone lines are open and available for you, 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. We're up running on our YouTube channel as well. You can get into a Husker chat room in there and have some fun with the folks uh, who are in there on a nightly basis. We're looking forward to hearing what you have to say about Saturday's game. Obviously disappointed. This was a winnable game for Nebraska. The Huskers, too many self-inflicted wounds. I mean, you can't try to field a punt at the one-yard line and that gets a safety. Uh, Fumble the football, they pick up, return for a touchdown. Those are tough things to overcome when you're in a Big Ten battle like Nebraska was. Absolutely. I mean, they were, it was a winnable football game, and they all know that it was a winnable football game. But that being said, and as much as we talked about it leading up to it, the importance of that one, how big it could be for a team moving forward, it is just the first game of the season, and it's a long season. And so I understand the disappointment and the frustration, but for this team, the messaging today, and, and it has to be, is we got to close the chapter and we got to move on because there's another game coming up this weekend and, and there's still lots of games left on the schedule and lots of opportunities to kind of turn this thing around and, and be the football team that, you know, they, they believe that they can be. You look at some of the numbers, the final numbers for this game, Nebraska out gains Illinois 392 to 326. Turnovers were even at one apiece, so it really wasn't like last year when Nebraska played Illinois. Pretty easy to find. You turn the ball over five times. They don't turn it over at all. You're going to lose, but that wasn't the case in this game. Special teams were bad, again, for Nebraska, and that was disappointing. The punt game was not good. You missed two extra points. I mentioned the Cam Tater Britt uh, fiasco on the punt. That, that, to me, was maybe the most thing, the thing maybe I was most upset about at the end of the day is I really thought Nebraska would punt it better. They did kick it off better, but I didn't expect Connor Culp 
to miss two point after tries in the game. Yeah, and on the flip side of that, how great were special teams, especially the punting for Illinois. for Illinois? I mean, that that can be a game changer. I mean, look how many times they you know pinned Nebraska right there and and had bad field uh, bad field. Um, what is it? Field, field position. Field position. There I almost said pos possession, <laughs> but field position. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a huge weapon for Illinois. And, and it, uh, you know, there were times where it didn't, it, it hurt Nebraska. So, yeah, I think the, the mistakes made by some of the veterans definitely really hurt. But I was really, really impressed with the defense and how they came out there, especially in the first half. I thought, you know, really the, the one drive that was, was not good for the defense was the start of the third quarter where Illinois chewed up about eight minutes on the clock. They couldn't get off the field. They couldn't make a play to get off the field. But that, that's one drive in a football game. Other than that, I think the defense probably leaves there feeling pretty good about what they've done. And you can build on that from the defensive side of the ball. And considering, you know, that was week one, there are a lot of teams that defense don't look that good out of the gate. I thought the tackling was, was solid. And the way that they were able to get in the backfield, the, the tackles for loss, nine tackles for loss, three sacks, that was definitely an improvement. So um, I, I think there's some flashes there of, of some really potential greatness uh, on the defense. But, yeah, the offense definitely have some, have some kinks to work out. But um, I thought Oliver Martin was a really big bright spot. Made some terrific catches. Um, he did drop one over the middle that I'm sure he'd love to have back. But he showed the ability to get behind the defense a couple of times. And when that's something we've talked about over the last month. Could Nebraska stretch the field a bit? Oliver showed he's got the ability to beat a Big Ten secondary down the field and a, a win a battle. He won a couple of 50-50 balls and outfought the defensive back to grab those. So, yeah, it, you're never as bad as you think you are, and you're never as good as you think you are. And so if you go back and dig through this, there were certainly elements that I think the coaches, the players can take away from it and say, all right, we just eliminate this, this, and this, and we're going to win these type of games moving forward. You also wonder, too, and I know it's, it's not an excuse, and, and Cam won't use it as an excuse, but maybe the pressure, feeling the pressure of how badly that they wanted to win, and it's on them to kind of turn this around, and some of the mistakes, maybe, maybe they can uh, feel a little bit of a relief now that they've got a game you know, under their belts. And, and, I mean, again, I know by now you should have a lot of those worked out but being how much uh you know pressure that they were kind of putting on themselves going into the season wanting to turn things around and wanting to win this football game so badly maybe uh you can learn from that and and kind of alleviate some of that and, and play a little bit more free moving forward yeah all right uh let's uh, hear what you all have to say 402-413-2400 the number to dot us up with a comment or question or Fire off some texts. We got some texts, but I'll start with a phone call tonight. Let's go to Omaha. Brian, you're up out of the gate tonight. Go ahead. Hey, Greg. Hey, Jessica. You guys the show. Really like it. Really like the Huskers. Um, yeah, pretty upset with what happened. Um, just seems like there's a fake culture going on at Nebraska where we're going to say all the right stuff. And we're going to do all the right stuff. But when we're on the field, we're not going to execute or do anything right. We're going to talk and say that the wide receivers have improved. The tight ends, they're going to be a focal point. I don't know if you were going to say it's because of Adrian Martinez can't get them the ball or they can't get separation. But it was a long offseason of hearing about how the wideouts are going to change and the tight ends are going to be a focal point I didn't see it um, just seems kind of me like we want to pass the the assignments but not do good on the exam go Oscars I appreciate it thank you Brian thanks for the phone call no and I, I certainly get that after one game you sit there and Austin Allen only had a couple of catches only got targeted four times did did pull in two but I, I do think you saw Oliver Martin win some battles downfield. I don't know that Nebraska early in the game, Brian, I think even Matt said this on the broadcast, Nebraska wasn't winning battles off the line of scrimmage to get open to give Adrian somebody to throw it to. And then, you know, and Jessica, this goes to a point you've brought up time and time again, is you've got to give Adrian some time. And there was some snaps he did not have much time to throw the football. I think it was a subpar day for the line as well. Yeah, I think they admit that. I think everybody kind of admits that, that what they've, 
kind of been doing and showing in practice. I mean, Matt Davidson said it on, on the broadcast, like, you know, some of the throws that Adrian missed, he hasn't been missing in practice. And, and again, that has to translate to Saturdays. And we've been saying that as much as it's been talking season and we've heard a lot of these things have improved. It, it does. It has to go. It has to show up on Saturdays. And so I think that was kind of a, a disappointment for this team because it, it's been in practice. It's been something that's been consistent for the wide receivers and, and the, this offense, but it didn't, you know, come to fruition in a a lot of that, you know, we heard them talking about the game plan, you know, had to throw a lot of it out. They weren't prepared for, for what Illinois brought. But, you know, you have to be able to adjust in those those situations, absolutely. But, um, yeah, I, I think he, he does have some weapons. And maybe we didn't see it uh, come to full fruition on Saturday against Illinois. But I do think there's some wide receiver, there's some talented wide receivers in there that we could see emerge moving forward in the season. I totally agree. Dale and Hastings on our text line said, after hearing the coaches upbeat all off season, uh, I was really disappointed and discouraged after Saturday. My question is, how could the mistakes keep happening, especially from seasoned veteran players? That's a good point. I mean, Cam Taylor Britt might be the best football player on this team, and he makes the gaffe of trying to grab a punt around the one-yard line. Connor Culp was an all-conference kicker last year. He misses two PATs. If your best players don't play well, and Adrian's one of their better players, and he missed throws. If your best players don't play well, you're not going to win. And so those guys all have to be better. A thousand percent, and they will be the very first to tell you that. I mean, Adrian sat up there and, and said it today in the press conference, which, again, kudos to him for, for answering all those tough questions and saying that he's got to be better. I mean, he knows it. I mean, that he's the leader, and Cam Taylor Britt is a captain of this team. He's He can't make those mistakes. But, again, going back to what I was just talking about, about how – there's so much pressure and there's so much want to to be different to change the narrative maybe a little bit uh, you know overthinking maybe a little bit too much pressure we'll see again it was one game and I know it's it's been kind of what's been happening in the past but if they can maybe uh, maybe if it was more so the pressure and and overthinking things and and trying too hard in this and maybe going back and, and having being a little bit more free and, and going back to to what's been working for him in practice that could help him as well but yeah the, the captains there's no there's no excuse they've they've got to fix that that cannot be something that happens repeatedly each and every saturday and, and my guess is cam tater Britt probably hasn't slept very well since no. saturday because he knows what a big gaff that was and Nebraska overcame that, and you can overcome some kind of mistake like that early in a game, and they did. They took the lead after they gave up the safety there, but it's just that that was one of about seven things that piled up during the game that cost Nebraska the win. It was probably step one of then six or seven more, and that's why you lose 30 to 22 because you add step one to step two and keep on moving down the line. And but, perhaps, you know, arguably, the, I mean, yes, the, the, uh, the punt and, and the fumble, scoop and score, but one of the biggest momentum changers was the, uh, you know, the roughing the passer that, that took away the interception. Like, that was a massive huge. momentum changer, too. Yeah, Scott Frost, and we're going to play the clip here in a little bit, said that's, that's probably the biggest play of the game. Mm -hmm. Nebraska's leading 9-2 to two if they... If that doesn't happen, and, and, and I actually, Jessica, I, don't, I really don't have a problem with the call. I went back and have watched the tape. I think they probably got it right. And if, it's tough for Caleb because you make a great play, but you can't throw your full weight on top of the quarterback. They're going to get you every time. But if he's able to kind of land and roll off of him or whatever, Huskers would have the ball like at the 18-yard line, up already by seven, and maybe just put a chokehold on that game. So it was a huge, huge play. You hopefully, you, hopefully he learns from that. The rest of the defense learns from that, that, you know, how massive that play was. I mean, so, so if that – and, again, you can't talk about ifs, you know, like that. But if, if that play doesn't happen, then we're might not in a situation where Adrian fumbles and there's a scoop and score. So, yeah, I mean, that, that was a really, really tough – tough play and a tough pill to swallow for this defense no doubt yeah it was and I thought Caleb played really well uh, I thought he was having a very good football game I love the the pressure Nebraska was getting on Illinois quarterbacks in the first quarter they knocked Brandon Peters out of the game with a, a sandwich sack that they put on him so there were some really good things there and then and then that penalty flips the, the whole thing and again I as I said I going back and looking at it I think they got that one right I think they missed a couple of others. And that's been, you know, some things that people have said here on the chat. The refs, I mean, there are some other huge calls that, you know, again, kind of maybe change, change the narrative of this one a little bit. And, and I just, 
we we had this refing conversation back in the summer, but um, you don't want to you don't want to be the reason why games go one way or another, and you can't put yourself in that situation as a team. You absolutely cannot. You know the the decision from Cam. I, I know he you know will be the first to tell you wrong decision, but the fact that you know in such a game like this where some of those calls are could play such a big emphasis on the outcome of this one. I, I have I kind of have a problem with that that the, the officiating did play such a huge part in this game because you you don't want that you don't want it to come down to a call going here or there and, and changing the outcome of it so but yeah you can't put yourself in those those kinds of situations but also you don't want the officiating to determine it either I thought we, we mentioned the name Oliver Martin I thought that they called an offensive pass interference on him I thought was a really bad call I thought he was kind of running his route he ran into a defender. He has a right to go wherever he wants. That, and that wiped out a big gain. Nebraska and Adrian made a beautiful throw. I think it was a Samore. That got the ball down around the 20, and that, that stopped that drive as well. That was a call that I do have an issue with. Hey, buckle up. Put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office, 402-413-2400. The number if you want to dot us up with a comment, a question, or fire off a text. More of your calls, and we'll hear some clips from the head coach from earlier today coming up next. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Double espresso for Matt, large ice mocha for Greg, $2,022 for Katie. Oh, oops. Everybody's mind is on the Nebraska Lottery's Powerball's Rockin' 15 promotion. Until September 25th, buy a Powerball with PowerPlay ticket and enter for a chance to be one of 15 to win $2,022 and a chance to win $1 million. Sorry for the mix-up, Katie. Here's your latte. Forget the coffee. Where's my $2,022? Powerball top prize odds, one in 292 million. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit to Toast Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or to ToastSubaru.com. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed helping you and your cattle. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years if a child survives they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives this is rex burkhead the team jack foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure there's a lot of work to do to beat this disease and we need your help Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. 
Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. When you're ready to pursue a career-building college degree, go with the school you know and trust, the University of Nebraska. And if you need the flexibility, convenience, and affordability of an online degree program, you can go online with the University of Nebraska. With courses developed specifically for the online learner by our four regionally accredited NU campuses, it's a valuable online education for your very real-world future. Go to online.nebraska.edu to learn more. Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us. Chevy, find new roads. Did you know that cigarette butts make up a large portion of microplastics in the ocean? Which end up in 70% of seabirds and 30% of sea turtles. Bank of the West is helping to solve this problem by not financing big tobacco. Proving that what a bank chooses not to finance can be just as important as what it does. Learn more about what we do and don't finance at bankofthewest.com slash change. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We're back, Sports Island, here on a Monday night inside of our Acres Equipment Broadcast Center, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to dot us up. With a comment or question, let's go to Mullen next. And Mark, good evening, Mark. Welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks. I haven't uh, called in quite a while, but after this Saturday's performance, I just felt like I needed to talk about the quarterback. Um, I don't understand. Frost, you know, talked today about not playing bets because he was inconsistent, and this quarterback is so inconsistent that I can't believe after four years he's still – spotting teams like one or two touchdowns with mistakes that just kill the momentum and kill the team. And you saw it in the second half, the defense was flat. And um, I don't know what, why there isn't a, why they can't go to a backup or something like that. And I guess I'll listen to you off the phone. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Hey, Mark, I get it. I understand it. I mean, we talked about it all summer long. Adrian's got to cut down the mistakes, and he didn't throw any picks, but that fumble was big. That scoop and score right before half gave Illinois the lead, gave him the momentum, and I think led to that drive in the third quarter. He's got to be better, but the coaches are at practice every day. He's the best we have right now, and I think you know the hope, Jessica, this week is maybe you get a nice lead and you get a Logan Smothers or a Heinrich Harburg some snaps in the game, and maybe they will take over the job at some point in time this season. It would be absolutely massive to get those guys some experience and in front of a crowd. But, yeah, I mean, the coaches have been saying that Adrian has been improved in fall camp. And as we've said, you've got to, you know, prove it on Saturday. So, you know, they, they said that they've been seeing an improved Adrian Martinez in, in practice. But, absolutely, it's got to translate to Saturdays. And, and I think Adrian's the first to admit that. So... Brian and York on our text line. For you guys to say the officiating determined the outcome of Illinois winning the game is by far the terrible and completely inaccurate statement. Well, Brian, we, we didn't say that. We, we said there were some questionable calls. We openly said, Nebraska, we started the 
the program. I hope you were listening. And then we talked about the mistakes is what cost Nebraska the game. So I'm sorry if you heard us wrong, but we did not say no, the officiating cost us the game. Yeah, and if I, if I misspoke, absolutely no. You, they did not, Illinois did not win that game because of the officiating. I just said, you know, my dad's an official, and we, we had this conversation earlier in the summer about, you know, referee's worst nightmare is to have, you know, that big an impact on a game or an outcome of the game. And so there were definitely some huge moments of this game that were impacted by calls one way or another. And that's, that's the point I was making. I, absolutely, Nebraska, the, the decision from Cam Taylor Britt, that was one that was talked about. Was his knee down? Was it not down? You know, that call went against Nebraska and it ends up being a safety. But Cam knows he can't make that decision right. in the first place. So, so that kind of thing, absolutely. You know, whether the call is wrong or not, Cam should not have made that decision. And, and like we've said, uh, you know, several times throughout this, this uh, show already and, and even on Saturday, Cam knows he can't make that decision. And he'll be the first to tell you that. Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. Back to the phones. We go to Omaha. Mark, you're up next on Sports Island. Good evening. Yeah, how you doing? Um, hey, I was going to comment on the officiating uh, remarks as well. It did come across like we keep making excuses. Uh, and, and this is what keeps happening. Scott Frost is in his fourth year, not his first or second. These things should be corrected by now. But after I watch this football game and then I go watch the volleyball game and I listen to John Cook, I realize that the difference is this football team is not physically or mentally tough. They just are not tough. When things go wrong, they seem to go in the tank. They don't overcome this stuff. And I don't think they have the players that are on those teams that pull them out. I mean, Bo Pelini used to will those guys to win. Scott Frost is not Bo Pelini. So that's my only comment. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for the phone call. Let's uh, stay in Lincoln and chat with John next. Good evening, John. All right. Well, I concern me, this isn't the first game. This is the first game of our fourth year. And I guess the thing that concerned me, our quarterback looked like he could, he could not throw to the right. He was just overthrowing high all over the place. And why didn't Nebraska – have a secondary plan on the offense. And Scott Frost is a $5 million man. He's the man that's supposed to be calling that. And I listened to other Nebraska former coaches, coaches talk today and, you know, saying about preparation and being ready. And why do you take a running back and not leave him in long enough to get the feel of the game? And there's a lot of opinion that the top running back isn't in there, but I'm not down on I'm not down on the field looking at that. But it's very concerning. Uh, people are getting very, uh, I guess, un, you know, concerned about what's going on. And it, again, it's not the first game. This is the first game of the fourth year, and nothing, nothing has changed. The team doesn't look any better, and. You have to get somebody that can coach it, and I think the team is not getting the proper coaching. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I just if this if we lose next week and the next week and the next week, I don't know where our program is going to be. All right, John, appreciate it. Thank you for your thoughts. Let's head to West Point next. And Pete, good evening, Pete. Welcome to the program. How are you doing? Good. Well, I'm going to have to be honest with you. As I watch the games, 85 to 90 percent of every game we've played in the last three years and, and the beginning of this year, we get out coached by the opposing coaching staff. And I, I kind of break down the games, and there's so many things our kids don't seem to be aware of that it's it's kind of pathetic. Like special teams, for example, after three years, and we make this kind of mistakes. That goes back into coaching. It's what you allow in practice and how you practice. And on offense, to be honest with you, it seems to me like it's Scott Frost's offense and he doesn't adapt his offense to the talent that he has. And and the zone blocking, we've struggled for three years in this zone blocking schemes. Um, but maybe maybe you got to be humbled to learn and get better. So I still have some confidence in this coaching staff. I think they're all came into a power five 
for the Big Ten and didn't have much experience, and I think it's kind of showing. All right, Pete, appreciate it. Thank you for the phone call. Thanks for your observations. Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, and it's the law. We need to step aside, get a break in. Back with more of your calls at 402 413 2400. We'll also mix in some cl- cl- uh, clips from the coach from earlier today. That's all next. Shop with confidence at Woodhouse Buick GMC and find your next vehicle. Our knowledgeable sales team is eager to help you find a vehicle. Plus, get you on the road faster with our streamlined sales and buying process that you can start online. We have over 100 new Buick and GMC models with the features you want at a smart price. Visit our indoor showroom or shop online anytime at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. Experience the difference and shop Woodhouse Buick GMC first. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. There is no place like Nebraska. And there's no place that treats you like your home, like Sap Brothers. For 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and been a reliable partner to local farms and Husker fans across Nebraska. Providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farm equipment, and welcoming guests into their travel centers. Visit www.sapbrothers.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the fields, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit triplebfeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. Hey, this is Jimmy Buffett. I am so happy to be bringing my Broadway musical, Escape to Margaritaville, to you. It's got all the songs you know by heart, a few new ones, a great cast, and dancing that'll knock your flip-flops off. Get ready to set your mind on island time and get your tickets today. Fins up. At the Lead Center, September 10th through 12th. Get your tickets today at leadcenter.org. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment, and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Did you know that cigarette butts make up a large portion of microplastics in the ocean, which end up in 70% of seabirds and 30% of sea turtles? Bank of the West is helping to solve this problem by not financing big tobacco, proving that what a bank chooses not to finance can be just as important as what it does. Learn more about what we do and don't finance at bankofthewest.com slash change. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Great job, everyone. Printers, great coverage. Phones, quick pickups. Firewall, tough defense. And network, way to carry the whole team. Ever since Marco started calling our technology plays, we work smarter and our whole game is more streamlined. Marco's all-star services and support give us the winning edge. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. 
When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Downtown, and the OG location in Millard. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Our Sports on the Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first. 18 brand, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance and buy online at woodhouse.com. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night, 402-413-2400. The number to dial us up with a comment or question. Let's go down to Texas and Mike. Good evening, Mike. Welcome to the program. Hey, good evening, everybody. Hey, a um, couple things I was going to touch on. We're in year four. Uh, I know Trev Alberts, when the Big Ten crew showed up in Lincoln, I didn't watch anything except for his interview. I wanted to see what he had to say. A couple of things he mentioned that he'd be looking at and, and kind of uh, taking into account or he, what he thought people wanted to see as well as himself were a team that didn't beat itself, a team that wasn't committing inordinate amounts of penalties, getting lined up right, fundamentally being sound, Several of those things, just rudimentary fundamental things. So you have to look at this debacle. It shouldn't surprise anybody. I know um, two of my brothers and I were all season ticket holders for about 15 years. Year two, it was pretty obvious in Frost inability just to get people lined up. And all you heard about was, oh, we got the wrong kids in here and, you know, there's bad people in the ball in the locker room and on and on and on but you can't get people lined up is kind of a telltale sign that you don't have control of the team go look at what Bielema and I'm not a fan of Bielema but they were there for what nine months Greg on the job looked like they knew what they were doing with their personnel they the kids were lined up the effort was there they weren't making uh, mistakes in fact far from it they looked well coached competent I would dare say so I'll just put it out there he needs to go his staff of power of non-power five staff that he brought with him that he insisted to bring with him you're getting the payback on what he brought with him there's no doubt about it when you hire a guy and he insists on bringing a staff with no experience at that level it's amazing and I'd love to hear how good Mario Verduzco is, he, you know, he's such a wonder that at this guy's age, is this the first power five job he's had? But he's a guru and we're supposed to, you know, take that and swallow it. I think people have seen enough. He's got a $20 million buyout. I know he's not going anywhere, but he should. He should. And his winning percentage is right there between what, Bill Elliott and who's the other guy? He's right in there. And for all of the pundits that have made fun of Mike Riley, just think about Mike Riley being 500 as opposed to where Scott and friends, or as I say, Frost and friends are at. All right, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. Let's go to Brian next. Hello, Brian. You're up on Sports Nightly. Hey, Gary, Jessica. Good, good evening. I just wanted to 
to pick your brains and, and kind of understand with the way the defense played in the first half, they played lights out, especially in the first quarter. What happened to that same defense in the second at the start of the second half and allowing Illinois eight minutes and four seconds on of gameplay and not being able to stop the run, specifically uh, Epstein? Yeah, I think, I think Illinois made some adjustments at half on how Nebraska was lining up. They identified a couple of places they wanted to attack, and they attacked it, particularly off the left side of their line. And I think that was the reason that one long drive happened. I think Nebraska made some adjustments after that. They didn't run it nearly as well after that drive, but I think that's what, I think that's what took place. Awesome. Thank you, it's Greg, but appreciate the phone call. Let's uh, let's go to <laughs> Mike and Lincoln. Hello, Mike. You're up on Sports Alley. Hi. Um, yeah, I, the special teams errors. Um, you know, I think I think maybe that was Cam Taylor Britt trying to just make a play. You know, looking at the the punt right before that. I mean, it was perfect coffin corner punt. And so he was probably thinking, you know, well, I don't want to put the offense in that situation again. And I just, I just don't think it's time to overreact yet. I, I, I think there were a lot of improvements that, that I saw in terms of, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of false starts. Um, we, we didn't have a whole lot of holding penalties. I mean, the penalties that we did have, they came at the wrong time, which they always seem to do. Um, you know, there was there was one bad snap. So, it, I just don't think it's time to overreact yet. And I I think I think they're on the right track. And and I don't think you know Illinois is is the oldest team in the country. And so, I just think I think everything's going to be okay. All right, appreciate it. Thanks for the call. There is 11 more games left, and then we heard that theme today at the press conference from some of the players and even from Scott Frost about, we've got a long way to go in this thing. Yeah, it was a huge game, and, and it could have provided a lot of momentum. But if you put too much on it, then it ruins an entire season. So, yeah, as it did, we want to see different things, and we want to see some of those mistakes not be out there. But you know what? It's a long season, and you cannot dwell on that or else the rest of the season is just down down the tube. So you've got to move on. You've got to be able to close. I'm with you. I mean, it's it's a long season. you still got some chances to show that you're an improved football team. Set up to uh, Minnesota and Tim. Good evening, Tim. Welcome to the program. Hi, thanks. Um, I, I, like, I really like that last call. I definitely uh, agree with that. Not time to overreact. And knowing me, I should probably just say some of this for – um, another call, so I'll do the best I can. <clears throat> um, one person talks about how he went into the tank when things went went um, awry, um, not right. I was actually starting to fear that maybe they were quitting after that second drive of, or that second half opening drive. Uh, but obviously, we did come back to show our show our character. But still, um, you know, we can't. Allow that. I, I've got plenty more things, uh, but I'm gonna close with a question and, and kind of a, one other thing as fast as I can here. Save time. On that Martinez fumble that w- resulted in the scoop of score, scoop and score, was the ball not? Was the ball was it the ball knocked from his hand from behind that caused that, or did he just? Because, I mean, it was close to maybe the ground causing a fumble. I know it was a legitimate fumble, but it was a ball knocked from him. That's, that's my question on that. Um, the other thing, the thing I want to close with as soon as I can here is I have learned a valuable lesson about texting. And as actually as a fan, I am going to notice and note some improvements that I need myself need to make when I call in or text this show. I need to be better about that. Um, I, some, I, felt, I, I think I, the way I, I was too wordy and I caused some of my text to be maybe you know, taken wrong. But, you know, but, but Greg and Jessica, that was not your fault. That was mine. If I, if I want my text to be under, understood or the right thing taken from it, 
um, I need to make sure that it's clear enough that that it won't that it will be that it will be uh, understood. So I'm going to try and be better about that as a fan. And I guess that's an encouragement to anyone else who tests. If you you know get as if you if 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 you have to explain it too much, uh, then it probably shouldn't. Then probably should wait until you can be more concise, so it'll be very clear. So I'm going to try. Uh, the team needs to get better, and I'm going to admit right now I need to be better on that. And I'm, I'm still with the team, so very there you good, go. Tim. All right, appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. Yeah, I, I didn't see any replay that would have thought that Adrian's fumble was not a fumble. I don't. I mean, we would love to say maybe his knees were down. I didn't see that angle. Uh, I think it was a. I think it was a fumble and a, a mistake and a big one that, that cost Nebraska a, a touchdown right before halftime. Uh, time to tell you that Valentino's Pizza, Poster, and Pepsi. It's back. Get two jumbo one-topping pizzas for seventeen ninety-nine each, and a free Husker schedule poster. Add a two-liter of Pepsi for only dollar ninety-nine. Valentino's. It's the official pizza of the Huskers. The way pizza should be. More of the show coming up. Husker fans, looking for a seat in Memorial Stadium? Custom three-game mini plans are available now. For only $195, choose any combination of the six games available. Matchups available in the three-game plan include the home opener versus Fordham, Buffalo, Northwestern, Michigan, Purdue, and Iowa. Don't miss this opportunity to join the greatest bands in college sports and help fill Memorial Stadium. To build your mini plan, visit huskers.com slash tickets or call 1-800-8-BIG-RED. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. On May 7th and 8th, Nebraska celebrated its largest May graduating class in university history. 3,594 degrees were awarded to Nebraska graduates in ceremonies at Pinnacle Bank Arena and Memorial Stadium. Along with receiving their diplomas, graduates also heard inspiring speeches from notable Nebraskans, including legendary coach Tom Osborne. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's Cheesy Mac and Cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Wait, time out, Mom. Instead of using ketchup on your hot dog, pour on some of this Dorothy Lynch. Good, huh? Mmm, yeah, talk about serving of an ace. Did you see that? She spiked it. Yes. Am I going to be watching you play for the Huskers someday? <laughs> How about you get me some more pizza, and then we talk about it. Share the tradition of one-of-a-kind flavor that goes with anything, game day or any day. Dorothy Lynch, endless flavorabilities. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and the Team Jack Foundation raises funds for childhood brain cancer research. Please consider supporting the Team Jack Foundation by texting JACK to 243-725 or visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Org. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night following a Husker loss on Saturday to Illinois. Let's get back to the phones to Norfolk and Randy. Good evening, Randy. Welcome to the show. Yeah, the first thing I'd like to say is, uh, you know, how young are all of our wide receivers? Because 
I know Mr. Martinez had all day to throw a couple of times and there was nobody wide open. And it's only the first game of the season. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. Actually, I've seen a lot of improvement. Give them wide receivers a little more time and stuff to get them to develop a little bit more. I think things are going to pick up for Nebraska. That's just my opinion. Oh, well. Thanks, Bye. Randy. Appreciate it. Appreciate the phone call. I, I think I, I saw some encouraging things in that wide receiver room, even on Saturday. And I, I, he's right. They, there were times they weren't getting open, but I think that as the game went on, they felt better about what they were doing. You have to remember, Samori Toure hadn't played a football game in two years, so – probably knocking off the rust a little bit. I think he will have bigger games than what we saw. Um, but Oliver Martin had some flashes of good things. I think there's other guys in that room that, you know, will have some – but it's just, you know, again, just getting out there and getting a feel for it. But, yeah, there are some younger guys that need some more experience, need some game experience. But there's definitely some talent in that room that I think are going to be able to uh, do some big things this season. Doug on our text line said the Brit safety and the roughing the passer were two huge plays because it makes your defense go right back out of the field. And that's exactly right. I mean, you force a punt and then because of what Cam does and you get a safety, you got to kick off your defense is right back out there. And so, yeah, I mean, I think there was a little, and it was hot down there. It was really, really hot. I thought the guys did a pretty good job. I mean, what did Illinois end up with? 326 yards of offense. That's, that's not a bad day in Division One football to hold somebody to 326 of offense. That's a pretty good afternoon defensively. Yeah, I mean, it was smoking hot down there. And so I thought the way that, you know, they were able to, to stay out there and continue to bring up the energy, talking with a couple of them after the game, just the way that, you know, the defense, there were a couple times in that first half that they had to come back out there very quickly. Right away. I mean, they did not have any time to to, ra- to rest and get a breather. And so, you know, they, they kept up their energy. And, and, you know, then you went into half. And, yes, the adjustments were made. But then also, I mean, you got to think maybe trying to get their feet under them a little bit. It was hot and, and gassed and, and not whatnot. But uh, I, I thought the defense played. I was really impressed with them, especially there in that first half. On our text line, I don't understand why Step only got three carries, thought he ran well with the ball. I do two. I think when we fell behind by 21, I think Ramirez probably more of the back that can make catches out of the backfield and do some certain things. I think they feel more comfortable with him in those packages when you're in catch-up mode. And so when getting behind by that, it changed what Nebraska really wanted to do. I, th- I liked what I saw from Marquise. I thought he played well. Yeah, and I mean, I think he made the most of the opportunities that he was given and so and scored the very first touchdown of the college football season. How about that? Very cool. Buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Also, one of the callers referenced, Jessica, that, you know, when, when things go south, this team just folds up. I, I, I kind of take a little... A different look at that thing there. I mean, I, when we're down 30 to 9, that's the time to give up. And I, yet, Nebraska had the ball in the last minute with a chance to go tie it. So yeah. I don't think they quit at all. I, I was pretty impressed with how they handled some of that adversity, which was a big question going into this is how would they bounce back from that? There were a lot of teams that would have folded up the tent and been like, oh, well, I mean, this is a bad day for us. You know, this, all these things are going wrong, and we obviously, you know, are making still mistakes. But I thought they rallied. And, and fought until the very end. And, and I think that's definitely to be com- commendable because there are definitely teams that would not have tried to fight till the very end like they did. Yeah. Hey, uh, we have time to tell you that we are broadcasting inside of our beautiful broadcast center sponsored by Acres Equipment. Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. We didn't get to some clips from the head coach. We'll try to work that in next hour. Mondays with Matt coming up in the other side of the uh, top of the hour break. We'll get his thoughts about Saturday's game. We'll also hear from Ty Robinson. Jessica caught up with him earlier today as well. One hour in the books. Great calls. Thanks for everybody being a part of this one. With that, more of them coming up in hour number two. We're back with more Sports Highly on the other side. Come on back. on the text line text 402-413-2400 with your husker thoughts treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years if a child survives they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives this is rex burkhead the team jack foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure 
There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Downtown, and the OG location in Millard. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs. Texas beef brisket. Georgia chopped pork and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Here we go again. The celebrating, the accolades. Ever since we added Marco to our team, our technology can't lose. Day after day, success after success, Marco's made our business IT a force to be reckoned with. The only drawback of being technology all-stars is keeping champagne away from the electronics. <sighs> Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com.
Good evening, I'm Greg Sharp. Here is tonight's sports ticker. Husker head football coach Scott Frost held his weekly press conference today. Talked about how he's excited for Saturday's home opener against Fordham because fans will be back in the stands. Yeah, there's a different feeling for me. Um, we missed the fans so bad. It, being in Memorial Stadium last year with an empty house, um, it was it was almost depressing. And um, there's so much passion here, so many good fans. Uh, we can't wait to see them on Saturday. Huskers will take on the Rams at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Pre-game coverage here on the network begins at 7 o'clock. Nebraska volleyball moved up a spot on the weekly ABCA Top 25. The Huskers are now number four after their two wins this weekend. Meanwhile, Husker volleyball freshman libero Lexi Rodriguez was named today as the Big Ten's co-freshman of the week. Rodriguez paced the Huskers with five digs per set in a pair of wins over Colgate and Kansas State. The Huskers are back in action Friday at 11 at the Devaney Center against UNO. The U.S. Open began today in New York. This year it's almost more about who's not there than who is playing. No Roger Federer, no Williams sisters. But the field did get their action underway for the two-week tournament today. Round Major League Baseball, one afternoon final. Minnesota beat Detroit 3-2. to two. Games underway. The Cardinals lead the Reds 2-1 to one in the sixth. It's Philadelphia 3, Washington nothing. Bottom of the second. Baltimore leads Toronto 1-0 in the fourth. They're knotted at one in Tampa. The Red Sox and the Rays, bottom of the third inning. About ready to get underway. The Rockies and the Rangers. Later tonight, New York in Anaheim to tangle with the Angels. The Padres and Diamondbacks get together in Phoenix. Milwaukee and San Francisco battle at Oracle Park in San Francisco. The Astros and Mariners up in Seattle. And the Braves and Dodgers tangle in Los Angeles. Those are today's headlines. I'm Greg Sharp. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Zone read, back to throw, being rushed, gets hit, fumbles the football. Pick it up. Picked up yes. Nebraska, racing toward the goal line, and scoring is Deontay Williams. Deontay Williams knocked the ball free, scoop and score. It's all Nebraska right now in Lincoln. 23-3, big red. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. And we're back, hour number two of our Monday show. Busy phones in hour number one, 402-413-2400 if you want to be a part of it with a call or a text. Coming up this hour, it's Mondays with Matt. Matt Davison will join me here to give, give us his thoughts about Saturday's game against Illinois and where we go from here with this team. And also Ty Robinson, who played a lot of football for the Big Red on Saturday in Illinois. Jessica caught up with him earlier today as well. We hope to maybe even mix in some Scott Frost clips later on in the hour. But we'll start the hour with a call. Let's go to Omaha next. And Steve, good evening. Steve, welcome to Sports Nightly. Good evening, guys. Love listening to the show on my way home from Lincoln every day for work. It's it's a it's a great way to get home and get to catch up on if any if I missed anything on the weekend. Um, real quick, I just I'll, I'll try to make this as quick as possible. Wanted to touch on a couple of things earlier in the show. You know, you guys have said something about you know the refs and how we also beat ourselves. You know, I growing up I was always taught don't put yourself in that situation to let a, a ref make a bad call. You know, have you lose a game? You just I mean. That, that comes down to you didn't play well enough at all, and it, if it had to come down to that one call, then you didn't deserve to win anyway. Um, do I think that that team didn't deserve to win? No, not necessarily. I mean, I thought the defense played really well, um, for the most part, better than they have been the last three years. Um, the offense needs some work. The other point that I wanted to make was is you don't see a lot of these guys now, you know, going and picking each other up after bad plays. Um, I mean, unless I'm, unless I'm missing it or it's happening when the cameras aren't on the field. Uh, you know, they're going around and the and guy makes a bad play and it looks like he, you know, he kind of gets chewed on the sideline and, and nobody's over there saying, hey, go out and get him next time, go out and get him next time. And we just come out and that's where all those mental mistakes come from is nobody's picking each other up and it hasn't happened for a while. So that's all I got for you guys. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Appreciate it, Steve. Thanks for the phone call. Good points there. All right, Mondays with Matt. Matt Davis and Husker Cutler analyst here today. You've had now 48 hours to digest. Think about this one. Replay it in your mind. What uh, what stands out to you about Saturday's game? 
I've watched it a few times. I mean, obviously, it was wildly disappointing. You, you, first games, you, you think about them the entire off season, and it's for every team in the country, right? No different here. And so you've been thinking about this game a long time, and, and you put a lot into it, and you want to get off to a great start in the season, and that didn't happen on Saturday. I thought the guys played really hard and, and uh, did a lot of good things, um, but obviously it wasn't enough. Just uh, a few too many mistakes and didn't make quite enough plays. So... Uh, disappointing day for sure, but um, you know, it was the first game of the year and a long way to go. Four or five plays made a huge difference. They do most weeks, but maybe not as big of an impact as the four or five on Saturday. I mean, anytime you give up a, a touchdown when you're on offense and the other team scores a pick six or a scoop score or whatever it is, those are huge plays. And so that was a monumental play in the game. And uh, the Caleb Tanner uh, penalty on the sack, which was, was going to be a turnover. Guy threw it right to us uh, for an interception. We would have had the ball with great field position up 9-2 to two at midfield um, with a lot of momentum. Instead, they go down and, and tie the game at 9 apiece. We had already left some points out there at that point. So, um, you know, the defense was, was really good on Saturday, I thought. They played really, really hard especially early in the game. They got after the quarterback and um, got some sacks, tackles for loss, really shut them down. And once the momentum really changed at the end of the first half, I think that, that trickled into the third quarter. And that's why, you know, college football is a game of emotion and, and runs and, and um, momentum. And we lost the momentum at the end of the first half and, and go in uh, with a different mindset than I thought we were going to have in the middle of the second quarter. And so you come out and give up an eight-minute drive to start the, the third quarter. And uh, that was really the only drive of the game that was, that was pretty disappointing from the defense. I thought overall they played great, uh, well enough to win for sure. And then they gave up the one long one on a 50-50 ball to the one-yard line. But other than that, they were really good. So, yeah, I mean, there was just a, a couple of plays that really changed momentum in the game. And... Uh, when you get behind like that, it changes how you play. It changes how they play defense. It changes how, how you try to call an offense, and you're trying to play catch-up, and that's not where you want to be, especially on the road. So, uh, you know, it was, again, it was just a disappointing day overall, but I think there were a lot of good things to take out of it as well. Yeah, there, the old adage is you're never as good as you think you are or as bad as you think you are. So there were positives in the game. Give me a couple that you like, some things you saw Saturday. You're like, that can play. That can help us play yeah. winning football. I mean, overall, the defense was good. I thought the front seven was, was really, really good. The D-line did a great job. Tony Tuioti and his, his guys, they rotated up front. They stayed fresh. Um, those guys were, were causing havoc in the backfield. Uh, Mike Dawson and his guys on the edge, play, they're playing their best football right now. Garrett Nelson and Caleb Tanner, Feldarius Payne, uh, Damian Jackson came in and, and uh, played, played well. So... Uh, there's a lot of good things on defense. I think we're we're solid in the secondary, you know, with a couple guys that are at least that are going to play in the NFL. So um, I think we have uh, a good enough defense every week to go out and, and be really good. Offensively, you know, it, it, obviously it wasn't the day that you want to have. Uh, just one turnover, but it was a big one, and they scored on it. So that's a big one. And, uh, you know, just small things here and there. One missed block, um, a missed throw. Um, a penalty, uh, one snap over the head, you know, those are all plays that, that add up. And, and uh, offensively, you know, there's some growing to do, but I think there's a, a base there that, that we can draw upon. There were enough good things Saturday that, that you can say, okay, this was good, and, oh, we need to work on this and this and this. And so, you know, all you can do is go back to work. I mean, shoot, the guys had a good practice this morning, and, you know, you, you – try to take the next game one at a time and try to get a win on Saturday in front of our home fans and then try to do the same thing again the next week and, and move on with the season. So you, you can't let one game define your season. And it was a big one because it was the first one. But, and you know, it's a, it's a long year ahead. It's our Mondays with Matt segment here on Sports Audio. Matt Davison, Husker Color Analyst, joining us as he will each and every Monday throughout the football season. Fordham is not a household name. But it is the home opener. Isn't that what gets guys' juices going on Saturday? For sure. I mean, our, our guys are going to be ready to play. I, I really think we have great character on our football team. I think our leaders um, are guys that are going to help get the team ready to go. That's not going to be an issue. 
I mean, remember, it's been so long since these guys have played in front of fans. Some of our young guys have never played in Memorial Stadium. And so, you know, they're going to be ready in front of their family and, and all the, the fans that are going to show up. I mean, it's, this is a special place to play college football. You only get to do it 12 times a year. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. You're only at home seven times. And so you're going to be ready to go. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's no question our guys are going to be uh, excited to play Saturday. We need to go out and try to play a clean game and uh, work on the things that we need to get better at and, and uh, fine-tune some things on both sides of the ball and in special teams and just uh, get better in all three phases and go week to week. It's going to be fun to see fans back in there. It's been nearly two years. I know we had a 30,000-plus crowd for the spring game, but nothing like what we should see on Saturday. No, it's, you know, one of my favorite things in my life is is, you know, getting ready for the tunnel walk the build up to seeing memorial stadium fill up on saturdays in the fall has been a big part of my life and uh so i'm looking forward to it myself i know our players are and our staff is and um and our fans are you know to to see their team run out of the tunnel and and uh hopefully put on a show on saturday so look the 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 emotions that go with college football can sometimes be um a downer but man on saturday it's going to be it's going to be really special, and it's going to be emotional for everybody involved to see the stadium full and to uh, see our team run out there and, and do what we all love to do, which is watch football and have our guys do what they love to do, which is play football. So it's going to be a really fun day. All right. Have a good week. We'll see you in the booth on right. uh, Saturday. Thanks, Greg. There he is, Matt Davison, joining us in our Acres Equipment Broadcast Center, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas Acre Solutions for every field. Head coach did meet with the media earlier today. We were going to get to some of these in hour one, but had a lot of great calls and comments, so we got to those first. Uh, he was asked about the offensive line play on Saturday against Illinois. Here was his comment. Yeah, um, you know, we, I give them credit. You know, we, we watched a lot of tape on them, tried to, to give our best guess to what they were going to do. Uh, they played an entire spring game in odd and um, came out and played an even with wide nines and fives. And uh, we just hadn't had as many reps at, at that. Um, so that had a little bit to do with it. Um, but hey, we, we got to be better. Uh, we got to establish run. We got to be ahead in the game so we can commit to the run. Um, when you get behind in a game, then you're, then you're forced to do a few more things. And um, there's a lot of factors that led to that. There was his comments about the offensive line. We've referenced it a couple of times on the program tonight. The big swing of the interception that gets nullified because of the roughing the passer call on Nebraska. And again, as I've seen the play, I think they made the right call. But it was a huge play in the game. Nebraska was up 9-2, to two, would have had the ball down around the 20-yard line after the pick. Maybe go up a, a couple of scores, a couple of scores in the game on the road. So here's the coach was asked about his thoughts about that play. You know, all I saw in the during the game was the bang bang play of him hitting the quarterback right as he was throwing it. Um, he's got to be smart and not bury him into the turf. I assume that's what they called um, that play right there. W was probably the biggest play in the game. Caleb's been uh, playing wonderful all fall. Uh, I thought his his level of play in that game was good. But there's critical moments where you got to make a snap decision and a smart decision and a decision that's best for your team. Um, there was a few times in that game that we didn't. And uh, those, those mistakes really cost us. So there was his thoughts about that. Now we'll wrap up this segment with just a clip about the offense kind of going back to the offensive line and throwing the ball. And it's got to be kind of in rhythm. And it's got to, you know, they got to give him a pocket to be able to throw and see out of. Here's his comment about all of the mechanics of that. Yeah, certainly. You know, I, I, their backup quarterback came in and did a, a tremendous job. But, um, you know, that's the situation you want for a guy like that to come in up 7 or up 14, um, be able to run the ball and throw when you need to. And then that's a little different situation than, than being behind and throwing. Um, we had every opportunity to be in command of the game at halftime and um, made some critical errors that uh, turned it into – a deficit at halftime, and, and that changed the style of play for both teams. You've got to adjust. You, you particularly when they fell behind, but 21, you got to completely change what you're wanting to do. Yeah, you got to go down to it. You got to get hurry, so it changes, you know, the the game plan of 
wanting to run the ball. But I, I, I think uh, too, Gabe Irvin was did what he needed to do as far as he didn't turn, he didn't drop the ball nope. at all. He didn't fumble it, and um, Marky Step showed some flashes. So, uh, but yeah, I think if you are uh, playing from behind, it definitely changes what you want to do from the beginning. All right, uh, there's some clips from the head coach from earlier today. 402-413-2400, the number if you want to dot us up with a comment or question. Fire off a text. We're also live on our YouTube stream if you want to jump in the chat room and hash some things out with the Husker fans in there. When we come back, we'll take some more calls, comments, questions, and we'll also hear from Ty Robinson. Jessica caught up with him earlier today as well. All that straight ahead. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. Nebraska is one of the best schools in America for student Fulbright scholars. 2021 marks the fourth time that the university has been named a top producing institution by the Fulbright program. Of the 30 Huskers who applied this past year, 10 were offered the prestigious Fulbright. An additional 16 Huskers were named semifinalists. Husker fans, stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following The Big Red on Facebook and Twitter. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding NU athletics, including game results, ticket promotions, and Husker prizes. Log on to also follow several sports-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Become a fan today at Facebook.com slash Huskers and Twitter.com slash Huskers to join and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Wait, time out, Mom. Instead of using ketchup on your hot dog, pour on some of this Dorothy Lynch. Good, huh? Mmm, yeah, talk about serving of an ace. Did you see that? She spiked it. Yes. Am I going to be watching you play for the Huskers someday? <laughs> How about you get me some more pizza, and then we talk about it. Share the tradition of one-of-a-kind flavor that goes with anything, game day or any day. Dorothy Lynch, endless flavorabilities. You and your vehicles work hard for the important things in life. Trust high-quality AmeriGuard lubricants by Sap Brothers to protect engines, equipment, and your investment at an excellent value so you can save money for the things that matter more, like sending your future Husker off to college. Contact your local Sap Brothers petroleum expert for more information on AmeriGuard lubricants. www.sapbrothers.net slash petroleum. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Husker Athletics. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, Creamy coleslaw and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit famousdaves.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Did you know that cigarette butts make up a large portion of microplastics in the ocean, which end up in 70% of seabirds and 30% of sea turtles? Bank of the West is helping to solve this problem by not financing big tobacco. Proving that what a bank chooses not to finance can be just as important as what it does. Learn more about what we do and don't finance at bankofthewest.com slash change. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. 
This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC business elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at Sid Dillon Buick GMC.com. We are professional grade. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Downtown, and the OG location in Millard. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family Shop. Woodhouse, first 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance and buy it online at woodhouse.com. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you on a Monday after the season opener for the Huskers. I'm ready for a home game. You ready for a home game? I am. I'm excited. And I know the players are really excited. And there's a lot of players on this team that haven't gotten to experience what it's like to play in front of this crowd. So I know they're really excited to uh, get out there on in front of uh, Husker Nation and, and Memorial Stadium for the first time. Should be good. And I'm, a lot of people who tailgate together kind of re Getting up with their acquaintances again. It's been a while since I've been able to do that. That's a big part of it as well. All right, let's get to the phones. Tim and Lincoln, you're up next. Good evening. Hey, how are we doing? Good. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the offensive line a little bit. It looked like to me that they did a pretty good job in pass protection. Um, it looked like Adrian just had a hard time either finding an open receiver or deciding on the open receiver. Uh, it looked like about six or seven seconds he was getting almost every play except for a couple of those sacks that were just missed blocks. Uh, I'll hang up and listen to you guys. All right, thanks. Appreciate it, Tim. Thanks for calling. I, I think the line play was spotty. We never could really get a running game established, and you heard Coach Frost talked about that they really prepped a lot for a three-man front. They got a four-man look from Illinois. I think there were times that, yeah, there was there was time for Adrian to find people, but – some of those, Jessica, I don't know that our guys were getting open at some point to the game. Yeah, Matt said that during the broadcast that, you know, receivers have got to get open, got to get some separation. So, yeah, I mean, I think it was at times maybe it was the O-line, at times maybe it was Adrian not seeing guys, and at times maybe it was the wide receiver not getting separation. But it's not all on one of those. I mean, it is definitely a lot. Each of those position groups had some issues on Saturday. And remember, we're replacing two NFL draft picks off that offensive line and Hymas and Farniak, who look like they're going to make their teams and do really well in the NFL. It's going to take a little bit of time for this offense to gel. I'm not ready to give up on it after week one in a conference in a conference game on the road for sure. For sure. Let's go to Maxwell. Randy, you're up next on Sports Highly. Good evening. Good evening, Greg and Jessica. Hey, Randy. Jessica, Jessica, you're doing a great job. Thanks. I appreciate it. How about me, Randy? What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're the old season pro. You know, I'm I grew old. up. That's remember, I'm the guy. Right. I'm the guy that grew up with Scully and all those guys in Southern California. I know quality. <laughs> uh, Greg, you are quality, and I like what Jessica's starting to bring to the table. You bet. Hey, you, you know, Friday Night Lights started last week, yeah. and uh, I have a boy. I have a boy that's a senior, and I'm going to have to join a support group after this season because I don't know what parents do once their kid is done playing uh, high school sports uh, hopefully they're good enough to maybe or fortunate enough to go on to the next level 
Well, ha have but, uh, fun. Enjoy every every moment of that. As a parent, that yeah, is a fun thing to be a part of. And I do. But the most important thing I called about tonight, Do you? this is one of those games. I, I think I've told you before, I can usually afford to take my family to one or usually about one game a year. And it's going to usually be a non-conference early game. Do you think, now I took them to a game a few years ago, and it was that game that was a makeup game. It was slipped in there. Bethune and Cookman, they had yeah. the tunnel. Yes, they had the tunnel walk. And you parents out there, get there a little early. And I shouldn't be saying this because then there'll be no place to stand. But it that is quite an experience, the tunnel walk. But I'm curious with the COVID situation, do you think they're going to do a tunnel walk? Oh, yeah. I think it's pretty much going to be normal. They're now, you know, they're they're recommending you wear a mask. I don't know how many people will do that. But, yeah, I think they're going to let people okay. down around the, the carpet area for you like normal. I think that's, yeah, I think that's, oh, that's the plan. It is mind-blowing, mind-blowing. And the last thing, you know, we, we, we've gone through a few four-and-outs, you know, four-year-and-out coaches. Um, I know we all expected more out of Scott Frost. I let's not let's not give up on him yet. I mean, I don't care if we give him another four years. Uh, you know, a slump it, it 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 gains its own. It becomes its own animal. Once 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 the Huskers break out of this, watch out. But it it becomes a heavy burden on the shoulders. And uh, hey, great show! I always enjoy listening to it. Thanks, Randy. Appreciate it. Let's uh, head from Randy up to West Point. Husker Dan, good evening, sir. How are you? Wow, Gr Greg and Jessica, that guy took my words right out of my mouth. And, and, Je and I was going to say that too, Jessica. You two, I've been listening for, oh, er Jessica, ever since you came on to replace. Um, and, oh, my goodness, you're doing a great job. And, Greg, you're always phenomenal on this show. Here's the thing. Um a lot of the callers tonight were Debbie Downers. I feel I uh, I'm always and will be a Husker fan till I die. I'm going to read you guys a quote from Scott Frost, and I want a lot of the people that are listening to this program to really think about this really hard and and long because here we go. You go through Scott Frost quoted this. You go through life. You, I mean, excuse me. You go through hard times in life in a lot of different ways. And all that does is make it sweeter when it all turns out the right way. That happened to me as a player. It will happen again as a coach. And you know what? That hit me, and I know they worked hard this off season and with you know the corona and all that stuff going on. And these kids worked their tail off on the off season to get back in front of a crowd, you know, and, and, and to play the way they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to do. You know, there was a lot of pressure on them in that game in Illinois. And, and Illinois had, what, 22, 24 starters coming back. It's like that, that game was going to go down to the wire. And what I saw, and I'm just about done, what I saw is no, nobody gave up. They, they fought. We were behind. We, we made mistakes. I know that. They came back. They fought through it, came back. And you know what? <laughs> we could have won that game. So I'll listen to you two and, and, and keep up the great work. You guys are great. I love listening to you every night. Thank you. I appreciate those kind words. I'm having fun. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, I think they showed a lot of character down the stretch because, you know, I think because there's so much pressure on the mistakes that were made and, you know, that they had that had to change. Well, there were those mistakes were made in the first half. And then the way that they fought back in the second half, I think, showed a lot uh, about this team. Had the ball late with a chance to go tie. And if you make the point afters, which is a fairly simple mechanism in college football, they could have gone down to get the win. If you make the two PATs, they could have gone down and scored and won the game. So... We're all disappointed. We all expected to see better things, but it's week one on the road and a lot of new parts of this team. That wide receiving room is almost all new. That running back room is all new. I mean, and Illinois had some dudes, as we heard they Jeremiah do. talking about, you know, some they guys do. that are going to play on Sundays and, and next year, probably. That's right. Let's uh, plug in another one. Let's go to Omaha and Mike. Good evening, Mike. Welcome to the program. 
Hey, those guys stole my thunder. Jessica, you are doing a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Greg, you are a pro. I remember what Mitch Holt has said about you. He said, we're going to love you if you show your personality. He had an if there, and I think you have. So enough of that. Look, the guys that screwed up in this game are some of your best players. I mean, we got so many new guys and who haven't done production before, and you thought they would screw up. But Adrian... Do you remember that one long pass he made early in the game? It was beautiful. Yeah, it was to Samori Toure. It was a great touch pass that he made. But then he made... No, I mean the long one, the bomb. Oh, yeah, to the Oliver bomb. Martin. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a pass he's had trouble with. And yep. then he follows it with three horrible passes and that horrible fumble. We know he's better than that. And I think when you guys said, and I said this earlier, we shouldn't say we got to win this game because, like you said, Illinois has got some dudes and they're, they're all grown men, and they got a coach that, frankly, at this point is a better coach than we got. These guys put so much pressure on themselves. We know they're better than that. And I told you, we just might lose this game and beat Oklahoma, and with our defense and the pressure we can put on a quarterback, we know guys can play better, and the O-line's got to play better. It's doable. I love it, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Yeah, hey, keep them coming. But those are the calls we're getting. Loving uh, Greg and Jessica. We'll take those all, <laughs> all night long. Hey, Nebraska, Agree. <laughs> Nebraska 811 says, go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, and it's the law. We're going to get to Ty Robinson coming up next. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs. Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the field, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant decal brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with decal. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. The game isn't just about winning or losing. It's about the snacks they share after they've used up all their energy in the field. It's the early morning practice before school and staying late after to get a couple more kicks in. It's the pride they feel for their team and the determination to always keep improving. Sure, the game isn't always about winning or losing, but when they've won the big game and celebration is in full swing, there's only one thing left for you to do. Get them home safe. Buckle up and back. Paid for by NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hey, this is Jimmy Buffett. I am so happy to be bringing my Broadway musical, Escape to Margaritaville, to you. It's got all the songs you know by heart, a few new ones, a great cast, and dancing that'll knock your flip-flops off. Get ready to set your mind on island time and get your tickets today. Fins up. At the Lead Center, September 10th through 12th. Get your tickets today at leadcenter.org. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
for a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. Chevy, find new roads. Did you ever buy something and get more, more than you expected? Emeritus offers insurance, employee benefits, and financial services, but we deliver so much more. The comfort of a human voice when you need it, the confidence of flashing a beautiful smile, the relief that your family can keep living the life they love, the serenity of knowing you've planned well and can enjoy life. That's what we really deliver. We call it fulfilling life. Emeritus. Insurance, employee benefits, financial services, and much more. You live in a smart home powered by Cox Internet, so you're not thinking about the pizza delivery. You're thinking how nice it is to get everyone together for a fun night. You're not thinking about the pizza, maybe just a little. Cox Home Life. Show me the front porch camera. Pizza! View your Cox Home Life cameras right from your TV using your Contour voice remote. Visit cox.com slash thisishome to learn more. Advertised features require subscription to Cox Internet and Contour TV. A high-speed internet connection is required. Home Life Security Services subject to Home Life Security Service Agreement. Cox Home Life Services provided by Cox Licensed Entities. See cox.com slash licenses. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the F&BO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card. Free with any checking account from FNBL, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at FNBO.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Whew. Sometimes being an office printer feels like I'm competing in an Olympic sport. Thankfully, I have Marco's Managed Print Services on my team. Marco's game plan helps me make big plays while saving big bucks. And Marco's lightning fast tech support gets me back in the game fast. <sighs> I'm up. Find out what your printers could be saying with Marco's managed print services at marconet.com. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and the Team Jack Foundation raises funds for childhood brain cancer research. Please consider supporting the Team Jack Foundation by texting Jack. 243-725 or visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a sports nightly Monday night. Keith from Norfolk, how many tickets are left to sell to continue the sellout streak? We don't have an exact number. Uh, we did have Trev Alberts on with us last Wednesday night, and he thought they were in decent shape. I don't think it's a ton. I think some people have already thrown the towel in, Jessica, that it's going to go away. I, I'm not there yet. It's only Monday. I think they could sell this thing out. Absolutely. You can get a couple of fans that want to see the street continue, and people uh, will hop in. But, yeah, I, I think it's not as far away as, as we think. So. Yeah, hope not. Um, you had a chance to talk to uh, Ty Robinson today. I thought he played well the other day. Nebraska didn't rotate as many guys as I thought they might up front. He certainly was out there for a, a lot of the game and making some plays for this team. He was credited with – Four tackles, three assisted, one solo tackle for him in the debut against Illinois. You, but you had a chance to catch up with the big fella. And if you missed it on Twitter, uh, right before they left, Jason Peters buzzed his head. So if you're, I asked him about it. So if you're wondering what, what the heck I'm talking about, go on Twitter, look on uh, his, his Twitter feed. But yeah, just kind of uh, catching up with him at the press conference with how practice went this morning. You know, I think we had a pretty solid practice today. Everyone, it seemed like everyone kind of blocked out last Saturday, and we're really just looking forward to Fordham this Saturday and, and really getting the game plan installed. You guys went back and started diving into film. Let's start with the positives. What were some of the positives that you guys saw in the film? I mean, our pass rush was way better. We had three sacks, uh, nine TFLs in the game. So that's a pretty, pretty big plus. I mean, we held them to 
maybe like what two touchdowns. I mean, a lot of those points weren't up to us. So we really did our job. But I mean, there's more that we can do. So I mean, more three now is get the offense the ball more, more turnovers, um, et cetera, more like that stuff. Yeah. So what were the, some of the things you took away that you need to improve on? Uh, definitely my hands. I needed more consistency with my hands. I'm kind of just playing with my big body and then uh, definitely just kind of reading blocks. I'm kind of just going upfield, not really doing much. So there's a lot for me to improve on after the first game. And I mean, the tempo is a lot different than what you see in practice as well. So, I mean, it's going to be a big jump, but I'm ready for it. The defense line, you talked about the sacks and the tackles for loss. How were you guys able to set that kind of tone and, and wreck that kind of habit in the backfield? It's just kind of the mentality we've had since spring ball. I mean, it was really good to have Jay and Jason Peter come back in and kind of show us the mentality they had back in, back in the 90s when they played. So I've kind of always carried that with me in the back of my head. I know a couple of other guys have as well and so spring ball we kind of got accumulated to it and then summer we really took it into full force and then fall camp we didn't let we didn't let one thing slide so I mean it's just kind of the kind of the thing we grew into that's that culture we've been talking about so uh, I'm really happy with with kind of the mentality we've had lately the offensive players were talking about how big of a momentum swing that was and how much confidence that gave them on the sidelines, seeing the sacks and the tackles for loss and, and the big plays that you guys are making. How much can that continue to provide uh, you know, a push, an oomph for this entire team, th those big plays that you guys are making? I mean, we, we know we have a saying, bring your own juice, so because nobody else is going to bring it, so might as well be, be you. And so I think the defense does a pretty great job, and I mean, you know, we're, we're tired of being on the field for seven to eight plays, so we want three and outs. We want to get the ball back to the offense. We want to go score. We, we need to start winning, so that's the next step. And the next step is back at home. How excited are you to get back in front of your home crowd? I'm excited. You know, it's pretty intimidating to see 90,000 fill the stadium and kind of scream, go Big Red or Husker Nation, right, Husker Power. So I know it can be pretty intimidating for some teams, and I'm really excited to hear, hear the guys, hear the chants back. And, uh, you personally, I mean, we saw the picture on Twitter. You buzzed your head. Uh, did you? Was that something you'd planned? What's the story behind it? It was just kind of a deal I made with with JP that the only reason I would, the only way I would cut my hair is if he cut it. And so one day he brought in the clippers and he said, "Be ready." And I said, "Well, a deal's a deal." So we went back into the back and got my hair buzzed and. Like I said, I don't regret it one bit. I mean, I, am, I have stopped sweating in my sleep, but my helmet feels a lot better. I mean, on Saturday, they had the, the air conditioning under the tents, and I felt great. I was cooled down, so. I feel like you look more intimidating, too. Was that part of the, the goal as well? <laughs> I mean, I guess it comes with it. I didn't know. I know that I don't have a weird-shaped head anymore, so I can kind of rock it. I've gotten a lot of, a lot of comments, a lot of jokes on what I look like. I've said, people have said I look like a thumb from Spy Kids. My mom has said I look like uh, the guy from Full Metal Jacket. Um, what's another one? I've been told uh, many other things. So, you know, I've just kind of been rolling with it. I'm happy with it, though. That's all that matters. All right, let's go to, to Saturday. What are, the, what are the big keys? I mean, I know you guys are diving into Fordham, but I'm, I'm sure it's more about what you guys are going to do and, and the tone that you guys set. Yeah, we just got to come out there and play the ball that we know how to play. Uh, just bring that mentality again, but consistency is key. We need to really keep it going. We can't just be a first-half team and kind of putter at the second half. We really got to be on top of things the whole game. Greg, are you going to try to get some of those nicknames in? Maybe a call on Saturday? <laughs> Maybe he gets a big sack or tackle for loss, you can call him. Uh, what, what was his from the Spy Kids? The, the spy, the, have you ever seen Full Metal Jacket? No. It is a classic movie. <laughs> it, it, you and Andrew need to go watch it. It was out like in the 80s, and it was it was raw. I mean, it was it was about war, so mm -hmm. it was a raw movie, but it's it's really, really good. It was critically acclaimed. I don't know. I might do that. He looks, he's intimidating. That's I walked in and saw him with that haircut. I wanted no hair. I'm like, holy cow. That's what I said. I feel like he looks way more intimidating. Yeah. A little scary. <laughs> yeah, he could be like a Hall Halloween character. So, uh, whatever works, that'd be great. Yeah, but I thought it's funny. Jason Peters said, "Hey, you need to shave your hair. Or you need to shave your head." And boy, he took care of it for him. But I mean, you heard the messaging, and we heard it from a lot of the players today that you know you got to close the chapter. And as much as I know Husker Nation's upset about the win, and but they've got to move on because this team has, you know, still feel like they have goals in front of them that they, they want to accomplish and achieve, and they cannot get hung up on this first game or else you're going to see the rest of the season tank. So they, they got to move on. It's so had a great practice today. They, they said, I mean, they've been practicing great, but had a really good practice today, lots of intensity. It's what you need. you got to bounce back from it. Need wins. Need wins. Yep. I mean, it starts with one, so go get Saturday and try to get this thing flipped. 
uh, on its edge. Good, good piece there with Ty. Hey, buckle up, put that phone down. It's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Still time if you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. Or if you want to jump in our uh, YouTube stream, you can jump in the chat room. Those folks are uh, getting after it uh, a little bit here tonight. We're back with more Sports Alley next. Stay up to date with the most current and latest news by following the Huskers on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and more. These social media homes provide the fastest daily updates on everything surrounding Nebraska athletics, including game times, results, ticket promotions, prize giveaways, and more. Log on to also follow several sport-specific pages and Husker head coaches. Join today and interact with thousands of Husker fans around the world. Visit huskers.com slash social media to see all of our accounts. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. A new grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture is supporting Husker research in the study of multi-robot systems in ag settings. The almost half a million dollar grant was awarded through the USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture to Professor Santosh Pitla. Pitla and his team will use the funds to further their research in the use of unmanned ground vehicles and drones on the farm. Hey, this is Jimmy Buffett. I am so happy to be bringing my Broadway musical, Escape to Margaritaville, to you. It's got all the songs you know by heart, a few new ones, a great cast, and dancing that'll knock your flip-flops off. Get ready to set your mind on island time and get your tickets today. Fins up. At the Lead Center, September 10th through 12th. Get your tickets today at leadcenter.org. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next-level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Downtown, and the OG location in Millard. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Treatment for kids fighting brain cancer has not changed for over 30 years. If a child survives, they will live with the side effects from the treatments for the rest of their lives. This is Rex Burkhead. The Team Jack Foundation invests in impactful childhood brain cancer research to find better treatments and one day a cure. There's a lot of work to do to beat this disease, and we need your help. Donate today by calling 855-RUN-JACK or by visiting teamjackfoundation.org. Your help makes a difference. Nebraska 811 says go dig red. Before you dig, always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie back with you. A few more minutes here of our Monday night show. Still time if you want to be a part of it at 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. We're back to the phones now to Norfolk and Jerry. Good evening, Jerry. Welcome to the program. Good evening, Gene. Good evening, Jessica. I'm I'm just amazed at all of these uh, sofa and armstrong or armchair coaches that we got in the state. If they would remember what happened when Tom Osborne took over for Bob Devaney back in the day, uh, in the first five years for Tom Osborne was a struggle, and everybody wanted to run him out of town on a railroad. Um, and look at what happened. He got his own people in there. He got his own coaches in there. He got the culture the way he wanted it. And look at what happened. Scott Frost, to me, inherited a train wreck. Um, he's, he's getting things in place. It, it, it comes down to patience is a virtue. And Nebraska just has to be patient. Not to mention we're expecting a lot out of really young kids. 
what, 18 to 25 years old, they were asking perfection. Uh, you're, you're not going to get it. Uh, I just wish Nebraska would slow down and let things go. Uh, Scott's doing an admirable job, and I really hope with uh, Trev Alberts as our AD, he sees this and he says, hey, Scott's here to stay. Let's see what happens. All right. Uh, Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate the phone call. No, you know, hey, it's game one. Uh, we're all deeply disappointed. But, Jessica, we've heard a lot of passion tonight. You know, we've heard people that are upset about it. And that's great because if you're, if you're not hearing that, you worry about people that have just kind of given up. So I'm right. glad that we've, we've heard a lot of that tonight. Yeah, and, I mean, the, the players are disappointed. You don't think they're disappointed? I mean, they really thought that they were coming out there and getting a win. But I do think it's so important that you got to close the chapter. I mean, I've said that a, a thousand times today, but you cannot get hung up on this loss to Illinois. You've got to move on because there's still a lot of things that can be accomplished this season. And, and that's what the message has been from the players, from the coaching staff, that, hey, and, and we, we couldn't put so much emphasis on that. As, as important as that game was out of the, out of the gate and – you said it several times. We, as important as it was, it's not the season. The whole season doesn't ride on that first game. Can't put that much on one game. We need to see progress. A lot of it this week. Next two at home. Try to get healthy. Get some confidence going. And get this thing spun around and going in the right direction. All right. Um, winner weekend winners. You got something in mind? Yes. Ani Evans, the uh, sophomore walk-on setter. Greg, we were watching the uh, game on the on the flight on the way home, and took us a while to get there, but yeah. we got to it. Kansas State uh, won the third set, uh, ran away with it. What they were on a 12-0 run in the third set, and then uh, Nebraska was trailing 12-6 in the fourth set. And Ani Evans comes in and was a spark plug. Uh, John Cook said steadied steadied us out, and so the sophomore out of Waverly, Nebraska, it was been a dream for her to play. I told the story a couple weeks ago after the red and white scrimmage. Got a chance to talk with her, her dad Doug. Her brothers call her Bob because they said she's going to play in the Bob Devaney Center. And so, <laughs> for her to get to you know help the team come back and win in that set and, and get that victory, so so special. So Ani I'm Evans done. is my weekend winner. Very good, cool that you you pulled that up because it looked like they were heading to a fifth. They really did. I think Nebraska was down 14 to eight or something and had gotten dusted in the third set, so you thought that thing was headed for five, and then it flipped around. So, uh, And again, cool. important because Nicklin Hames uh, was out this weekend. Hopefully yep. she'll be back yep. uh, soon, Cook. but yep. the fact that she was out this weekend uh, was big for Ani to be able to come in there and, and provide that spark. Coach Cook said today, trying to get her back into some practice rotations this week and see what they can do if they can get her ready for the UNO. They'll play two matches on Friday. UNO uh, and the first one at 11 a.m. at the Devaney Center. I'm also volleyball, but a former player. I'm going Justine wong yeah, It was great to have cool. her back. She had her gold medal there. Uh, she got a rousing ovation at the Devaney Center. So cool for her to come back and share all that. So many Husker fans happy for her and, and Jordan and Kelsey for winning the, uh, the gold medal for Team USA. But it was just great that she came back that quickly. And it meant so much to her, as we heard today, that you know she wanted a, a copy or a clip of how the fans reacted, the welcoming that she got, to be able to show her family. It meant so much to her that how well received, which you, you knew she would be, but even even as much as you expected, I think it still just means so much. And so she uh, asked for a clip from Husker Vision to be able to send to her family. So that, that, that just goes to show you how much it meant to her, too. Very cool stuff. All right, that's going to put a wrap on tonight's show. Tomorrow we'll hear from both coordinators. They're going to meet with the media after practice. We'll have that. We'll have our volleyball show tomorrow night with head coach John Cook uh, talking about the 2-0 start and then some better competition coming to the Devaney Center this weekend. Arizona State's going to be here. Georgia's going to be here. They'll be tested a little bit more here this weekend. So looking forward to that tomorrow night here on the program. Thanks to Jessica, to Andrew, to Mike, to Tim, who's getting broken in back behind our screen. Looking forward to getting him up to speed with a lot of things here on the network. And all of you, great show tonight. Thanks for all the input. We'll do it again tomorrow. Good night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Woohoo! Business technology one, network downtime zero. Being a game-winning IT network takes hard work and an experienced technology coach. 
That's why our game plan includes Marco. Marco helps our entire business infrastructure perform better and score big day in and day out. With Marco's veteran experience guiding our team, every season is a winning season. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Did you know that cigarette butts make up a large portion of microplastics in the ocean? Which end up in 70% of seabirds and 30% of sea turtles. Bank of the West is helping to solve this problem by not financing big tobacco. Proving that what a bank chooses not to finance can be just as important as what it does. Learn more about what we do and don't finance at bankofthewest.com slash change. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs. Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online.